coma is produced when a comet's orbit brings it closer to the sun, heating the surface of the comet and giving off gas and dust from the surface. The gas and dust form a mini atmosphere around the comet and it's this that astronomers refer to as the coma. The coma is then pushed by the solar wind. This creates a fuzzy looking surface to the comet and a long tail behind it pointing away from the sun. What the coma is actually made up of depends greatly upon what the comet itself is made from. But in most cases this is water and some other chemicals like carbon dioxide, methane and ammonia. The solar wind is composed of charged particles ejected from the sun with a great deal of kinetic energy. When this strikes the coma of the comet, it pushes the mini atmosphere away from the sun, producing the familiar tail. However, a comet may actually produce more than one tail. One tail will be in a direct line pointing away from the sun, as may, may be actually at a considerable angle to the direction of motion of the comet. This is known as the ion tail or the plasma tail. The other major tail is the dust tail. And this follows the actual orbit of the comet like an overloaded lorry shedding its load behind it. When the Earth crosses through the dust tail of the comet it can produce a meteor shower. A common meteor shower such as the Perseid meteor shower is caused by the Earth passing through the dust tail of the Swift-Tuttle meteor. The orbits of comets are highly elliptical, meaning they spend a large part of their orbit around the Sun in the cold parts of our solar system. It's only when they are close to the Sun that they start to produce the coma. As their orbit takes them away from the Sun, the coma subsides once more. The question that astronomers have debated is that during the early history of the Earth, what part have comet impacts or meteors had in the development of our planet. What do you think?